get more detailed. before we kind of launch into examples that are kind of thrill at the point. A plane is more general than a line, okay? So if I hold this piece of paper up, you know, kind of representing a plane, it's slicing through space, and so it's more limited than all of R3 itself, but it kind of stretches out in, you know, lots of directions, but you know, it still has some specifics about it. So we already have denoted this, but we're going to get more into where the equation comes from. But the equation of a plane is, if it's cleaned up, is of this form, where x, y, and z are all to the first power. So notice it's linear in that x, y, and z are all to the first power. And you might not have one of the variables. I mean, you could have a plane that the coefficient of one of them is zero, or of both of two of them are zero. But don't look at this and think this is a line. In R3, this is a plane. It's general enough that it forms a plane. A line in space is much more specific. So that's what this picture is kind of emphasizing. Partly, I, I, I have it on there to use for a couple different things. The line is much more specific. It, it doesn't stretch out in a bunch of directions. And so I actually have to provide more information for the equation of a line than I do for the equation of a plane because it's more specific. So the equation of a line is, there's two different ways that you could represent it, but one way is you'll have some function that's explaining how to get x and some function that's explaining how to get y. and some function that's explaining how to get z. Now, if it's a line, those functions will be linear. They, themselves, they'll be little linear equations. But you're going to have to basically explain specifically, how do I find the, the x-coordinate of the point on the line? How do I find the y-coordinate of the point on the line? How do I find the z-coordinate of a point on the line? It, the line needs to be specific enough that you're going to need directions on how to get each of these separately. Now, once you have those directions, you could actually kind of combine them, and there's another form that you kind of can see up here. So, like, do you see how I have x minus 5 equals y minus 1 over 4, and y minus 1 over 4 equals z minus 3 over 2? So, you know, you could have x minus, now this A is not the same as that A, I'm just using it as a reference. So over some D equals Y minus C over some D equals Z minus D over some F, okay? Again, once you have these, you could use them or you could use information about the planes, like if you intersect two planes, it can form a line, so you could use that information. But notice this has more information in it than just this. How many equal signs do we have? Two. I have two equal signs, meaning I have two different equations that are explaining my line. It may help to kind of think back to algebra that you understood from earlier classes if I have a line in just 2D space, y equals mx plus b, okay, so here's an example line in 2D space, okay, I'm not worried about the third dimension, so that's why, you know, I, I have a little simpler equation than what we're talking about. 
a line is more general than a single point. To get a single point in 2D space, I need a second equation of a line. And the second equation of a line intersecting the first equation creates my point. So I could describe a point in R2 as the intersection of two lines. So I could say, okay, well, here's line one, and then here's line two, and where these two intersect is my point. Or you could describe a point by saying specifically what its x is and what its y is. So that's kind of like what we're doing here. I'm explaining specifically, you know, how to get X and how to get Y, or I'm explaining that if you intersect this plane with this plane, you're going to get a line. So a line is sort of the, the point, if you extend R2 into R3, what was a point is now a line. So, you know, like you're... In R3, if you take two planes and they do intersect, they'll form a line unless they're the actual the same plane. In R2, if I find two lines and they intersect, they're going to form a point. But I need much more information to locate the single point than I do to locate a line. I need much more, more information to describe a line than I do a plane. Okay, so that's the first thing I need people to recognize. This is a plane. It's not a line. It is a plane. To describe a line, you need more information. You either need two different planes, so you have two equations, hence the two equal signs, or you separately need a formula for x, a formula for y, and a formula for z. And I'm kind of making a big deal about this because a common error that I have found in the past is students get working in this subject and they, you know, they're asked to find the equation of a line and then they give this as an answer. But this is not a line, it's a plane. So they didn't find the line that they were wanting because they found some plane. This plane might contain that line, but they didn't quite find the find the line. So I guess first order of business is make sure that we kind of understand the different ways to represent plane versus how you represent a line. And then the next little picture before we get working on examples is th this picture is the next one I want to look at. This may at first seem kind of contradictory, but to actually describe the direction of your plane, you need a vector perpendicular to it. If I use a vector that's parallel to the plane, there's too many directions. Every way I spin my marker is a direction that's parallel to the plane. There's infinitely many vectors that are parallel to this plane but there's only one direction that's perpendicular to it. Or the, you know, I mean, the exception to what I just said is that I either perpendicular pointing out this way or perpendicular pointing that way. Okay, so there's only, once you have a plane set, there's only one perpendicular direction, but there's infinitely many parallel directions. So you can't describe the plane with a vector parallel to it, you need a vector perpendicular to it. So I am first going to work on how do you take information and actually come up with the equation of a plane. Let me, I'll just pick out a one. 